I miss my kids and I feel ready to go home. Do you miss your kids? It's okay if you don't. Friday. That means it's bench press day. Uh, all right. Uh, there we go. Hola, Margarita. <laughs> uh, what? We go home tomorrow. Yeah. All right. See you in a bit. Gracias. 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 Dude, it got crazy out there. Like, dishes were blowing and crashing. We're gonna try and get back to the room, keep things dry. Dude, what the heck are they doing? <laughs> thinking about eating one now, but then I probably shouldn't ruin my appetite for lunch. Uh, this is gonna be a modified Financial Friday where we're gonna discuss the finances of this vacation because it's our last day and we haven't done one of these in a while. But I'm kind of uh, like a little bit scared or hesitant to talk about this angle of vacation because I'm afraid that I'm going to come across as being a whiny bitch because this vacation has been like really great but I feel like I really want to be honest about how we really feel too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just talk numbers for a little bit. This vacation, uh, seven days, all inclusive, that includes airfare, all food, all alcohol, and I don't think we've spent one dollar since being here, like since we've landed in the country. No, I don't think so. Was thirteen hundred dollars a person, so twenty six hundred dollars total, which is really seems like so cheap to me, to like have this lifestyle where you can literally get everything you could ever want or think of. At one point in my life, or even sometimes when I'm back at home, I, I thought about going to an all-inclusive and just like getting everything I wanted and drinking whatever I wanted and not having to worry about cost and getting all this amazing food and just 100% relaxing and just being like, that is the dream life. I can't wait to do that. But now we've had it, we've been doing it for a week and it's like disappointing. I mean, it's fun at first, like, I don't know, the first time going to the buffet, it was like, whoa, look at all this. Mm -hmm. And then the second time it's like, okay, it's like the same food recycled. And the third time it's like, okay, they just moved the directions of the food, but there's only four things I ever want anyways. <laughs> then like I got pina coladas and once I had twice in one day and I was like, oh, those are so sweet. So now I'm drinking a lot of bottled water. <laughs> 
I realized there's something fulfilling about scarcity in a way where back home we eat out once or twice a week and we know we're, we're paying money for it. And it's like that is somehow more satisfying than this experience where you're just, everything's just so easy. It just comes so easy. And this actually fits in line with my experience of feeling rich. This experience, I think, manufactures that sensation of you're just like, you can afford whatever. I mean, it's like there's no boundaries, yeah. which is what it feels like to be super rich. You, could, you can just like do whatever you want. And that's really fun at first. But then after a while, there was a lot of things I loved about being poor or broke, like the types of things we appreciated. Mm -hmm. It was really hard to appreciate things the more money we've had. Yeah, there's, there's something that kind of happens when you're just given everything you could ever want. There's like a self-destruct button that happens with people that I felt even mm -hmm. on this trip where towards the end of the week, I'm just like, I, I feel a little bit dead inside. Yeah. It's like we weren't made for that. I mean, I was eating desserts like that I didn't want just because they're there. I feel like fatter now. We've like ran and worked out a little bit, but it doesn't counteract like having access the to feeling to of, so many yeah. things that will eventually really just kill you. Yeah. But I was thinking, you know, I could take a shower right now in vodka. Mm-hmm. Like it's free, it's sitting right there. I don't even want to drink it. Like that's ridiculous, it's like such a waste. I kind of want to do it. I <laughs> know, I thought about that. Do you want to do it? I don't really want to do it, mostly just because I don't want to get wet and have to deal with all that I just got dressed. I think you can just pour it on you and it evaporates. Okay. Never mind. I wish we were one of those channels where we like entertain <sighs> people and we're like, light ourselves on vodka shower, click here, intense. Right before coming here was weird because we just filed our tax return from 2016. And I did the math. We could afford to live here. By not living here, we're actually making a choice not to, but we could. Like, uh, it, it's actually not that much money. I think it was something like 80 bucks a day a person. And we could just live like kings. A lot of people actually want that. And at certain points of my life, I thought that's what I wanted. And now, I don't know, I, I think this is actually really just meant to be a vacation. And the thing that was disappointing to me is we have like our regular life back home and I'm thinking, okay, when we leave to go on vacation, we're gonna have this really exciting time and then go back to our boring life. But I think our life feels so exciting to me normally. Maybe exciting is the wrong word. Fulfilling, I think. Fulfilling, but I really like it too. Like for example, date yeah. night with you. I feel like it gives us time together, mm -hmm. or even our business meeting, where I don't feel like I never see you, and then we like come on this one week to just like reconnect. Yeah. Um, or even having a sex schedule, or an exercise schedule, or a rest schedule on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty rested like most of the week, mm -hmm. most of our life. Mm -hmm. So then when I come here, it's like I'm trying to fill up all these things that I feel like society has told us we need filled up, but really, you know, there's this phrase I heard a while back and it was like, we want to build the type of life that you don't need a vacation from. And I think we've done a pretty good job at that. If I had a million bucks or if I had all the money in the world and I could have everything I wanted, I would choose our life. And what I hope for some of these people watching this vlog is if they don't have that, that instead of putting all this energy into this one week really expensive experience a year, like a vacation, that they spend more energy re-architecting their life back home. That's why we put so much energy in this vlog, is to show you guys uh, not to do our plan, but to do a plan to implement your values in your home design, your schedule design, your relationship design. It's, it's totally worth it. What did make this week worth it for me was the friend uh, relationship conversations. That was really cool, just a way yeah. to say, hey, with these two other couples, Eric and Julia and Mark and Tanya, 
uh, friends of ours that we've gone back with from really seven to 15 years, more or less, seven to 10 years. We just had like a week of conversations that were like set aside without distractions. And that's what made it worth it to me. That's, if I was to ever do this again, that's like the only way it's for relationships. Mm -hmm. Like I don't need more food yeah. or fruit sculptures or vodka baths. Or snicker bars. On the brochures it says like, everything's included, including gratuity. So I've kind of made it a discipline. I just said I wasn't gonna tip anyone this week. There's, every time you get service, there's like this pressure I feel a little bit to like give people a buck and you could probably tip out a hundred bucks throughout the week for every drink or food that you get. But I was just like, you know, I'm gonna take it uh, at its word and not tip. It's easy to feel like as an American, I can swoop in here and save these people's problems with my money. So, oh, our server, she has a child and the child's nine. And we're like, oh, well I could help her because I have, I could give her a hundred bucks and I could make her day. And I, I just don't see money that way anymore. I think it creates as many problems as it solves. But I did actually really appreciate the service that we got from Margarita. So I want to give her five bucks. Yeah, out of gratitude, our own gratitude. We will come soon. You got a lighter in your shorts? <laughs> Been there all week. Hola. Miss Benjamin. Miss Benjamin. Uh, uh, this is our last day. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. No, thank you for you. Stay with us here. Come visit us. We will come visit. Yeah. Here's a little tip. Oh, gracias for you. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Six yeah. childs. We will. <laughs> Maybe one more tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We wanted to go snorkeling, but because of the weather, it got canceled. So I guess we're gonna have to go back to the pool. We're coming back. It has been a great week of relaxing and I'm just thankful that we get a chance to do things like this and spend time with our friends and even be able to you know trust our kids uh, and leave them in a safe environment where I think they can even thrive while we're away. I noticed a lot of people in the comments said you know that oh I wish I could do something like that I never could and I don't know, if you really want to, I, I hope that you're able to at some point because I've enjoyed seeing the world from this perspective for a little bit. But I'm looking forward to going home. Next time you'll see us on the vlog, we'll be back in Bellevue, Kentucky. Thanks for joining us on our vacay. We'll see you next week. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, okay. oh. Thing. Okay, should we do that? Okay. I was gonna say adios. <laughs> <laughs> Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom.